Coach, whenever you're ready. Um, congrats to LSU um, on a well-played game, amazing season. They played great. Uh, really proud of the group of men that I have in our program. Um, a lot of you know, second time we've ever even been to one of these, and I think you guys could see how tough and gritty unselfish, how much they love Kentucky, um, how they're willing to do whatever it takes to win. And I feel bad I couldn't help lead them to do something that's never been done before in the history of our program, but these group of men have changed our program forever, and I'm forever grateful for them, including the guy to my left who, on his, uh, on his visit, his main question was, Coach, what is it going to take to host a regional here at Kentucky Proud Park? It wasn't about scholarship money. It wasn't about NIL opportunities. It was about none of that. His whole goal was, what is it going to take to host a regional at Kentucky? And um, he's a, a great example of what a real man should be like and what it's like to be unselfish. And um, I'm thankful for him and the group of men that uh, had the opportunity and privilege to coach this year. Okay, we'll go for questions for Darren Williams at this time. Please raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you right here in the front, Jim. Hi, Darren. Could you address just how difficult it is to negotiate this lineup when they get to the bottom and then the top two or three guys coming up follow if, if you can't get out at the bottom? Yeah, I mean, they're one and two is as good as anybody ever, maybe. Um, they're one of the most talented teams I've seen in my seven years. So, you know, kudos to them. They played a heck of a two ball games offensively, and uh, good luck to them the rest of the way out. Okay, Darren in the back here. Darren, this has been a long ride for you. Just I know this didn't finish the way you wanted it to, but reflecting on this past year and getting the opportunity to host the regional in Lexington and then getting to come down here this weekend, just what has this been like for you? The dream, man. The dream. A year ago, I couldn't throw. Couldn't even throw a baseball a year ago. And uh, to be able to do what this team did, it, I'll, I'll never forget it. You know, nobody picked us at all at the beginning of the year. And uh, just the togetherness, the grittiness, the unselfishness, like Coach always talks about, man, it's so true. That team loves each other, man. Tight group on and off the field, like, the dream season. What a Kentucky kid wants to do if he plays for Kentucky. Anything else for Darren? Hey, uh, Darren, this is Ryan Black with the, the Courier Journal. Certainly in during this region on the lead up to it, everything like that, you know, Coach here has kind of constantly not talked about himself. He's put it on what it's meant to you guys, the program, you know, the state of Kentucky. Mitch Barnhart, but for you as a player, what did it mean to have uh, you know delivered the kind of season that you did for him? It means the world, man. Me and uh, me and Coach, we've only known each other for two years now. Hell, I've played against him before, so um, we've gotten so tight. One of the most influential men in my life. Not just a good coach, a hell of a person. One of the best human beings I've ever met, and. Uh, when I tore my elbow last year, he was just as emotional as a family member, man. So he means the world to me. I'm sure we'll stay close forever. Um, and, man, we really wanted to win. He, he lets us control the locker room, like I said last week. You know, he's not some crazy psycho coach that, you know, you've seen videos of before, man. He, genuine, honest to you. Not... I've enjoyed every minute of it. I, I'd love to play for the baseball for that man. I wish I could do it again, but you know I've had a hell of a two years with him. So I appreciate everything he's done for me. Thank back you, in Darren. the back in the back. Darren, coach mentioned this program is forever changed. I guess for you, how does it feel to know that you were a part of that, and how did it change? How, I know you're going to be gone, but what does it change now for this program to be able to reach this level of success? How does it continue? I think last year, you know, going back to week two of SEC play, Cole Stupp hurt his elbow on Friday night. Week three of SEC play, I hurt my elbow. 
week four, Tyler Bosma hurts his shoulder. And uh, we were down a whole weekend rotation in this league. You don't come back from that. You don't have any success after that, you know. And to what we did in the last month of the 2022 season, coming together with unselfishness, you know, nobody cared what their role was anymore. They just wanted to win, somehow find a way to win. We took a series from number one, Tennessee, one of the best teams I've ever seen, probably one or two between the team we just played tonight. And uh, then we won another series against Auburn, team who got, went to the College World Series. Then we made the best run of 12 seeds ever made in Hoover last year. That changes the program. And Coach recruited specific kind of guys for this year's team out of the transfer portal last year who just wanted to win. All they cared about was winning. And um, that's what it takes in baseball. It's a team game. You need one through 27 to buy in, not care about roles, just want to win for the guy next to you. And that's how we won 40 games this year. Anything else in there? Okay, we'll open it up for questions for Coach Thank now. You. Good job. Love it. Love you too. Darren, you can stay or you can you can. I'm going to go hug Mama. Okay, go she ahead. needs a hug. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Back here in the back for Coach. Nick, I had sort of the same question that I asked Darren. I know these past couple of weeks have brought a lot of emotion out of you even, and just getting to this point, doing something that you did do back in 2017 again with this specific group of guys, just what has all of this meant? Yeah, you know, um, as a coach, you, uh, you spend more time with them than you do your own family. And parents entrust us with their most prized possession. And when you get a, an opportunity to be around a group of men that are like that unselfish they literally like don't give days away you ask them to do something and they look you in the eye and they're like yes sir and it's just rare it's it's not common you know and Derek had nice words to say about me but I they're the ones that do everything and when you get an opportunity to be around people like that every day, it's like, I can't tell you how many times I'm like, this team's unbelievable. Kristen would ask me, hey, how was practice today? I'm like, Kristen, I, I don't know how we could have had a better practice. We pushed them. We challenged them. They didn't succeed at times. They never, they don't whine, complain, make excuses. They like, it's just not normal. It's not normal. And, uh, Yeah, I've got some really nice compliments from coaches and people around the league about our team and just how tough they are, one through nine, how they battle with two strikes, how we have so many different weapons out of the bullpen and you just can go to them. It's just not, it's not normal to be around that many guys that are that unselfish and just really care about winning. And um, it showed. And... Uh, you know, the, the hardest part about all this is I don't, I don't get to be around them anymore. Just, man, that, that hurts as much as anything. Yeah. Right next to him, Coach. Nick, kind of following up on what I asked Darren, uh, you know, you, you just talked so much about what this meant for so many other people other than you, and you were just asked this. What, what do you feel like you learned about yourself as a person, as a coach, through this whole season? You know, I've, I've, I've really grown and learned a lot as a coach. Um, I've made good decisions. I've made bad decisions. Um, you know, one, one thing I believe in is uh, feedback. And uh, feedback is the breakfast of champions. I have called former players. I've picked their brain. They've shared some tough things with me that I didn't want to hear but were true and uh, I've tried to make adjustments and become a better coach and you know the players are the ones that that make coaches look good we don't do the pitches we don't take swings in the box we don't do any of that they're the ones that do all that and they've made our coaching staff look really good but they're really the ones that have done it all 
right here in the front. Yeah, Nick, did you come into the Super Regional, did you, did you think that there was any kind of weakness LSU had that maybe you could exploit? Or did they do something in this regional better than you thought they, they were going to do? You talking about LSU? Yeah. Um, guys, you know this, but um, Jay Johnson's an amazing coach. He is an amazing coach. He, you look at his track record, and everywhere that guy goes, they win, and they win championships. You know, I first um, – Ran into him at the NAI College World Series. He was at Point Loma Nazarene, and I was at Embry-Riddle, and we played against each other in the College World Series. And then fast forward a couple of years later, we're out working a baseball camp in Las Vegas, Nevada, of all places. And uh, he's at USD, and I'm at Kentucky. I'm the volunteer coach, and um, we chatted and we talked, and we've been friends ever since. And... Um, we have followed each other. Um, I check on him throughout the year, every game, every single day. I check on his team. And everywhere that guy has been, he has won. Everywhere, everywhere. And uh, LSU is lucky to have him. I really believe that with all my heart. And um, he's not only a great coach, he's an amazing evaluator. He's an, an unbelievable tactician. He's a great recruiter. And um, that lineup is really long. That's a really long lineup. And, um, you know, those guys at the bottom, Joe Bear, Thompson, and, and Pearson, have done really good for them. If you go back and look, I mean, they were responsible even last night for, I, I counted, I think it was seven of the 14 runs, half their runs. That bottom of that lineup is, is really good. And um, it's hard to exploit much of them. There is a super well-rounded team. And um, there are many weaknesses there. <laughs> they don't. Back, back in the back. Coach, you said the, uh, the program's been changed forever. I guess how has that happened? And how does it continue? Because I know you want to host one of these supers, too. Obviously, that's the yeah. next step. What does this program do to really keep it going? Yeah. Um, obviously, we... We need to, to build off of this, but the, the way you do that, and you know this, but we were this close to being a national seed. We were a couple wins away. And, um, you know, I said at our, our media day at the beginning of the year how I, I wanted to get our program to where we were on the other side of that. I was tired of being one and two and short of even making the postseason. And um, I've been fortunate enough to be in the postseason a lot in my career and have had some success. Um, I was just like, man, we just got to get there. And I know we can do something. But, you know, we've been to two regionals in the last six years, and we've never been to one ever. So we're trending in the right direction. But, you know, we'll see what happens with the draft. We'll see what happens with, you know, guys making decisions about the transfer portal and things like that. But we definitely have some holes to fill. I haven't spent a ton of time on that because um, we've been playing and I've been focusing on these guys. But... We're close. It's not far off. We're really close. And, you know, these next two, three, four, five, six, eight weeks will help determine how the Wildcats will be next year. Anyone have anything else right here in the back? Nick, uh, it feels like Mason really kind of blossomed into a superstar over these past two weeks. Can you just talk about maybe if, if you saw this coming, obviously 14 and a third scoreless innings against that kind of competition, that's a big deal. Yeah, really amazing. You know, one of the things we asked our guys to do was empty their tank. And um, going back to last Friday, we've had a lot of guys empty their tank, and he's one of them. He's as, as good as arm, I feel like, coming out of anyone's bullpen. I think that highly of him, you know. And that guy gave us a chance to come back, and we had an opportunities and give them a lot of credit. They, they denied him, you know. But uh, super talented. He's a guy that obviously we're going to need back, you know, next year and be counting on in a big way. And, um, you know, his slider has gotten so much better. The fastball movement's been there. The slider's better. The change-up's there. And... Uh, he gives us a lot of peace when he's in the game. I know that. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, if there are no other questions, Coach, we want to thank you for your cooperation all weekend, and yeah. best of luck to you moving forward. Yeah, thank, thank you guys, and uh, appreciate the way you guys have treated us. It's been a first-class event. Thank you.